Good afternoon, Dr. Larry Calloway here. Um, going to be interviewing an awesome doctor out of Berkeley. Uh, we'll be talking about health and wellness and belief systems and whatever else comes up over the next 20 minutes or so. Hopefully you enjoy and go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dr. Jessica Lips. I am the chiropractor at Ginkgo Chiropractic and Sensory Development Center. Uh, I know that's a mouthful. I'm in Berkeley, California. Um, yeah, and I specialize in working, obviously doing chiropractic, but also working with kids with any developmental delays, um, integrating nutrition and neurology into my practice, um, and helping those kiddos kind of get back on track. That is very cool. Yeah. So getting a kiddo back on track, or any person for that or matter. Any person, right. <laughs> what, what, is, what is your definition of health? How do you define health? So I define health as making sure um, the three systems are balanced. So physical health and mental health and emotional health. And I also actually kind of usually add the, the fourth one is, and like spiritual health or just feeling connected. Um, so health for me is having those working at a hundred percent and having them also be balanced. So a lot of times people will focus more on maybe their physical health, but there's a lot of a mental, emotional stagnancy happening in their lives. And so that needs to also be put into play as well, or people won't necessarily realize how important the nutrients that you put in your body are for giving you the tools maybe to build on that strength that you're working on or something like that. So having those four things is actually, I would say, um, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, having them in balance, I think is really the definition of like optimal health. That is an awesome answer. Um, total tangent already. So I was having a conversation with a clinical neurologist that specializes in epilepsy. And I was talking about the CSF fluids studies from Dr. Rosa and about Dr. Carrick and things like that. And she said, basically, in my opinion, chiropractic is all woo woo. You can't affect the nervous system through um, basically afferent inputs. How would you respond to that question, that statement? I would say, look at the science. <laughs> Um, I, it's funny because even actually today I had a report of findings with, um, one of the kiddos that I actually I coach soccer. And so, um, she came in and her dad came in with her and, um, the ver for the very first appointment, I was like, Hey, and I'll use a random name, Mark. It's like, Hey Mark, have you ever been to a car park? He was like, ah, oh, no, I don't believe in it. And I was like, Ooh, this just changed the energy in the room. Okay. Um, so I, I kind of like, that's, that's a thing. A lot of people are skeptical or they've like had bad experiences or something like that. And, um, it's just, it makes sense that our brain needs to talk to the body through the spinal cord and there's going to be information that comes back up. That's how our body works and is a two way highway. It's not just down. We have to input information, sensory information into our bodies through that nervous system back in the spinal cord and up. And there's, you know, a bunch of science that you can go into that would get super wordy. But um, I think with somebody like that, I would just be like, what is your thought process with thinking that way? You know, why, why would you say that we don't get an afferent input, you know, from the spine to the brain, what makes you think that that's impossible? Cause there's all these pathways that are afferent pathways. You know, I would just kind of maybe answer his question with a question and make him think a little bit about what he was saying. It, it just blew my mind. I was like, <laughs> here's all the research. Here's the papers. Here's, and you're nothing, nothing's going in. Okay. Next conversation. And, and really <laughs> that's often because they don't want to, or there's something in their past or, in themselves where they just have this block and no matter what you put in front of their face, they're like, no, blah, blah, blah. And so I've definitely learned in my practice that there are going to be those people and it's not your job to fix everybody. It's 
their job also as well to be on their own healthcare journey and choose when it's time for when they're ready to open up into that mode of healing. And so if people kind of come at me like that and I explain where I come from and what, how I think of things and they're still not resonating with it, I'm like, all right, cool. Like, that's all right. You know, <laughs> I accept that. No, it was just totally funny and what you were yeah. saying made me think of that. Yeah. Um, so how do you think the direction of healthcare is going in your, in your immediate area mm-hmm. and maybe even larger? So um, I would like to think that it's going in a more holistic, proactive direction. And I really do think it is. I think because we have so much technology and media at our hands instead of going to a doctor or practitioner and and simply um having them tell you something and having them people believe that that concept is real we have the freedom and the free will to look online and to ask other people and connect with other people and see testimonials and share experiences and so i think health is shifting to be more proactive, which is very in line with chiropractic because we're a proactive healthcare system, you know, that's getting to the root of the problem before it becomes something bigger. And so I do truly think that people are making action steps earlier than they would before because they are starting to research on their own. Um, Specifically in Berkeley, I think that's been happening for a while. It's a very progressive community. You could throw a rock and find a holistic practitioner. And so like, that's actually very beautiful in our, in our community is there's lots of different avenues. Um, but I do think, I mean, since I've been in, in chiropractic school and as a chiropractor, people back home, I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, and that um, I didn't grow up with any holistic health knowledge, very little, you know, not even obviously nutrition was low on that totem pole. So even just in the last so many years, I've seen that community start to understand how to eat healthier and to take care of yourself before you're 50, 60, whatever, and start having pains. Um, I've seen that proactive healthcare movement start to uh, resonate in across the nation. So I hope it's going in a good direction. <laughs> that's, a, that's an awesome answer. Uh, some of the people I talk to just and articles that show up. I don't know if they're articles, Facebook, social media stuff. It's like, we're the worst country in the world for health and wellness. We're blah, 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 blah. And so there's this doom and gloom effect. But when you talk to people like us, chiropractors, most chiropractors, it's more of a positive world's getting better. People are being smarter. They have better choices and things of that nature. I think overall, because like I was saying, the media and technology, whatever you want to look up, there's going to be more of. So if you want to focus on the bad things that are happening, you're going to hear more of it because it's presented more in the media. But that doesn't mean that it's become more. It's just being talked about more. And so um, not pulling from that kind of stuff and pulling from just like my own friends and own family and like personal experiences, I think it, I think it is shifting to a, a better place for health that's awesome yeah so you mentioned that you um use a couple different modalities and you're super specialized in how you take care of individuals can you go into that a little bit more um yeah so i do a few different things so in the chiropractic world there's a lot of different techniques and i kind of pull from all of it or all the different things that i resonate with and depending on each individual that walks in my office, I'll, you know, incorporate a different thing. I do a lot of um, like gut rehab or functional nutrition stuff um, with different individuals, whether it is in the sensory development program that I have, or if it's just with another individual that needs help with um, regulating their gastrointestinal system, which is a lot of people. Um, And then I have a sensory development center, which I call the brain tree program. So basically um, any kid that is having any kind of developmental delay or sensory development issue, which means sensory processing issue, which means that 
on a daily basis, we deal with sensory input into our brains and we have to organize it and then organize an output. And somewhere in that reorganization or understanding of what's coming in, they can't process it well, right? They can't output the proper response. So that can look like a bunch of different things. Um, it can be more emotional responses where we're not firing up that frontal lobe at a proper rate. We're not getting that frontal lobe development. Oops, sorry. Um, idea. Um, or it can be something as simple or not simple, but as, you know, overwhelmed in, in crowds or um, draping your tummy over the table or, you know, different things like that. I talk a lot about um, poop in my office. If you want to do nutrition work, you got to talk a lot, a lot about poop. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really fun pulling that specialty into my practice and working with families and individuals who who have been looking for help for a long time and it's it's a three-pronged approach with chiropractic which oftentimes they haven't tried yet um, specific nutritional protocols and then neurotherapy as well that's super cool yeah so we're gonna go a little bit deeper yeah um your own belief system whatever that is um how does that one affect your health and how does that affect how you take care of patients or does it? Yeah, good question. Um, so I'll start that by my belief system is that everything living um, has an energetic component to it. So there's not for me, and I respect any and all different um, belief systems, and as long as they're not, you know, harming or looking down on somebody else. But I think that everything that's living, whether it's animals, whether it's nature, whether it's humans, has a resonance to it. And there's an energetic connection between all living things. Um, and that we live and try to live in, in the balance of um, how that benefits the greater system. So that's what I believe. So when I have someone on my table... And some people might be like, ooh, this is woo-woo, but this is real. And I talk about it with my patients, and they actually think it's really cool and totally agree with me. Nice. There's a resonance to that person. And so um, not only feeling like the muscle tension and how the bone is moving, whatever, you also, as a practitioner, get really good at feeling the resonance of the system and understanding where it feels messy or where it feels unorganized. Um, and so being in connection with myself and I can tell when I'm having my like off days or not, but the more connected I am with everything going on around me energetically, the more connected I am and the better results that patient gets. I truly believe. Um, I also think that when the patient starts understanding that the healing is coming from inside there, like that belief system of being empowered that's a huge shift as well. So a lot of people think I'm, they're going somewhere to get fixed by an external thing. And if they allow their belief system to switch into, um, you know, I'm getting tools to, to help my own body do what it's supposed to be doing, that like little belief switch helps them heal better as well. That's a fantastic answer. Uh, in that answer, you said something along the lines of, if you're not connected, you don't get the same results in your mind, in your opinion. And um, how do you keep yourself connected or strong energetically? Right. Yeah. And I think I really noticed that in the beginning of starting a practice where your mind's like everywhere and you're like, ah! <laughs> yeah. And, um, as I've gotten in the groove of my practice, that my stress levels come down. So taking care of yourself, I think, you know, making sure that I'm going to yoga or going and working out and doing weights or whatever that makes me feel um, physically strong and connected. And then also taking care of my health or taking care of my, like eating correctly. Um, I have, you know, some dietary things that make my system more inflamed. That's why I like doing nutrition is because it's really important for my healing journey. And so making sure that I'm 
um, careful about those things as well helps me stay connected and clear and obviously less inflamed is important. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of taking moments throughout the day to, and I, I, I need to meditate more. That's one of my list of things to do. And I wish I could be like, yes, I meditate every day, but I don't. Um, but I think there's also a lot to say in like small meditations throughout the day of just like checking in, just being like, okay, where are you? You know, how do you feel? How are you sitting? Okay, cool. You know, just those little things helps you kind of like go from being here near and here to back to here. I like that. That's good. I, um, I don't know if you've noticed on Facebook this year, I've been doing a ton of challenges like every month I've been doing stuff mostly um, cause I'm a dork and like everyone to know when I'm peeing and pooing and uh, <laughs> maybe I can, maybe I can edit that out. Um, but it's an accountability thing for myself and my patients that are doing it and other friends and whatnot. And last month I did a, um, a mindset challenge. So each day um, I challenged a belief that I think was either holding me back mm. or a belief that maybe was pushing me forward. And that was, it takes, it took about a, about eight to 10 minutes every day to do that. And I have a life coach and he's like, over the last 30 days, I've seen a huge transformation in your energy and your mindset and stuff like that. That's really cool. Fantastic. I need to do that. So I thought, uh, so, and we made a three minute meditation. So every morning, it's like a meditation slash affirmation that I listen to, to get myself going. Yeah. See, that's, it's been on my to-do list for forever, but I just need that ready, set, go. Yeah. Yeah. The green yeah. light. The green light. Um, all right. So I think I'm funny. I tell jokes. Did, did you ever come into my office when we had um, like one-liner Fridays? No. Yeah, we used to just Bummer. go silly jokes and whatnot. I think Chris Hufford, Dr. Hufford, and Dr. Austin Ivins started most of it, but. Oh, really? I see Austin sometimes, Dr. Austin, so I'll have to <laughs> ask him to tell me some jokes. Yeah, we used to do some jokes. Um, and then one of my bucket list things was to do stand-up comedy. In my first practice in Dublin, there was a tiny little comedy place and I was like, I can do that. I can make a fool of myself for three minutes or whatever. Yeah. And I finally did it last year before I moved back when I was still in Spokane. And I did it. And it went over really well. So much so that the owner asked me to come back and do a longer skit. And I got paid to do stand-up Yeah. Comedy. Oh, my gosh. That's great. I was like, that was really cool. Cool experience. And then I have done it a couple times since I moved back to the Bay Area. And I'm getting crushed. Oh, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, different crowd. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, so the reason I tell that story is part of these interviews. I like to hear other people's jokes. So, do you have a clean joke for me? I do. I will preface this by saying I am not a joke person and could never be a stand-up comedian. I I'm, I usually like my jokes are like in the flow of like, haha, say something sarcastic. I am not a let's tell a joke because I'm funny. So mm. I need to learn your jokes, first of all. <laughs> but um, I'm actually very surprised that my cat hasn't come into this video yet. But I'm cool. a crazy cat mom. So mm. I picked a cat joke. And it's going to be really great. Okay, ready? Yep. Why don't cats play poker in the jungle? Why don't cats play poker in the jungle? I have no idea. There's too many cheetahs. <laughs> that's a good one. That's pretty good, right? I like that one. Yeah. That's, 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 that's my joke. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Too many cheetahs. Too many cheetahs. So I usually don't tell joke backs, but I just thought of one that I think you might appreciate since you work with kiddos. Please. So this guy just got out of jail and he's jumping up and down. And he's super excited. He's like, I'm free. I'm finally free. I don't have to be in prison anymore. I'm free. And this kid comes up to him, pulls on his shirt, goes, dude, so what? I'm four. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. I like that. Uh, any words of wisdom for people that are listening to this? Um, so 
I would say for words of wisdom for any other chiropractors that are watching this, I would say the biggest thing I've learned is that doing work on yourself or just like getting more in touch with who you are ha is the biggest like practice growth thing, right? Because the more that you're in a comfortable space, the more that you're just giving and loving and people see that and people want to keep coming to that. Where if you feel like you're in this stress place or you don't know where, you know, people can sense that and they don't want to be around that. And so um, I think that kind of, a lot of people will put their own self care to the wayside when starting a business. And that's like the worst thing to do. Um, so that's my little tip for that. And then, um, yeah, for other people that, that are watching that have never gone to a chiropractor, go get connected, go to a chiropractor. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> yeah. With that statement, how, if people want to find you, when people want to find you, how do they do that? Um, so I'm in Berkeley, California, which is in the North uh, Bay, and um, you can go to ginkgochiropractic.com, which is G-I-N-K-G-O, chiropractic.com, ding, <laughs> and, um, or you, yeah, you can find me there, you can go to our Facebook page, which is Ginkgo Chiropractic, and these are little signs that you need to... <laughs> check it out yeah check me out but yep that's where i am very cool thank you for uh hanging out with me for a few minutes and have an awesome day